Hello everyone, this is Dr. Shweta Anand and welcome back to my channel Simplified Dentistry. Today's topic is Orientation Jaw Relation. So jaw relation, which is also known as maxillomandibular relations, is defined as any spatial relationship of the maxilla to the mandible or any one of the infinite relationship of the mandible to the maxilla. By spatial relationship, we mean in a given space or dimension. Now what is maxillomandibular relationship records? It is the registration of any positional relationship of the mandible related to the maxilla. Maxillomandibular relations can be classified as orientation relations, vertical relations and horizontal relations. Now let's know about orientation jaw relations in detail. This is the first jaw relation to be recorded. It establishes the relationship of the maxilla to the base of the skull or cranium. Basically, it establishes the angle or tilt of the maxilla in the three reference planes. The orientation jaw relation is recorded using a face bow. To record the angulation of the maxilla, a plane should be formed with at least two posterior references and one anterior reference. The center of both the condyles is taken as the two posterior reference point, whereas infraorbital notch is taken as anterior reference point. Now let's know about face bow in detail. A face bow is a caliper-like instrument used to record the spatial relationship of the maxillary arch to some anatomic reference point or points and then transfer this relationship to an articulator. It orients the dental cast in the same relationship to the opening axis of the articulator. There are two types of face bows, arbitrary face bows and kinematic or hinge face bows. The arbitrary face bow determines the approximate center of rotation of condyle, while the kinematic face bow establishes the center accurately. The arbitrary face bow is further divided into earpiece type and fascia type. First, let's have an idea about the arbitrary face bow, which is also called average axis face bow. It is most commonly used face bow and is preferred for complete denture construction. The hinge axis is approximately located and it positions the rod within 5 mm of the true center of rotation of condyle. This method does not locate the true hinge axis, but the clinical impact of this inaccuracy is minimal. Arbitrary face bows are classified as earpiece type and fascia type. In earpiece type, the external auditory meatus is considered as reference point to determine the center of condylar rotation. Whereas in fascia type of face bow, the center of condylar rotation is arbitrarily marked as 13 mm anterior to the middle of the tracus of the ear or the line drawn from the outer canthus of the eye to the middle of the tracus of the ear known as canthodragal line. Now let's know about kinematic face bow. It is a face bow with adjustable caliper ends used to locate the transverse horizontal axis of the mandible. It locates the true or exact center of condylar rotation or transverse horizontal axis. It is used in full mouth reconstructions. It usually requires a fully adjustable articulator. Now let's have a look at the differences between arbitrary face bow and kinematic face bow. Arbitrary face bow uses arbitrary measurements to locate hinge axis, whereas kinematic face bow locates accurate hinge axis. Arbitrary face bow is used for complete denture constructions, whereas kinematic face bow is used for full mouth rehabilitation. Arbitrary face bow determines only orientation jaw relation whereas kinematic face bow determines orientation jaw relation and centric relation. In arbitrary face bow, bite fork is attached to maxillary rim, whereas in kinematic face bow, bite fork is attached to mandibular rim. It is easy and quick method to record using arbitrary face bow, whereas recording with kinematic face bow is time consuming. Now let's have a look on the parts of a face bow. A face bow has five parts which are as follows. First, U-shaped frame. Second, condylar rods. Third, bite fork. Fourth, 
locking devices and fifth orbital pointer pin now let's know about each parts in detail first is u shaped frame it is a u shaped metallic frame to which all the other components of the face bow are attached it extends from the tmg of one side to the tmg of another side at least 2 to 3 inches anterior to the face to avoid contact second is condylar rods these are two calibrated metal extensions fitted on either side of the free end of the u shaped frame that are placed on the determined center of condyle the calibrations on either side are equalized and the third is bite fork it is a u shaped rod which is attached to the maxillary occlusal rim while recording the orientation chore relation the bite fork should be inserted about 3 mm above the occlusal surface into the occlusal rim fourth is locking devices there are three locking devices which are as follows one is locking clamp for bite fork it attaches the bite fork to the u shaped frame another is locking clamp for orbital pointer pin it locks the orbital pin onto the u shaped rod and there is another locking screw for the condylar rods fifth is orbital pointer pin it helps in marking the anterior reference point that is infra orbital notch and it is present only in arbitrary face bow now let's know about recording of orientation jaw relationship for complete denture The procedure of transferring the orientation of the maxilla to the articulator involves face bow record and face bow mounting. So first let's have an idea about clinical procedure for recording orientation jaw relation using fascia type face bow. First the patient is seated in a comfortable position with his head upright and supported by a headrest. Then the maxillary occlusal rim is inserted into the patient's mouth and contoured and all the required guidelines are marked now a point 13 mm from tragus of the ear on the canthotragal line is marked on both sides the bite fork is flamed and attached anteriorly to the maxillary occlusal rim 3 mm above the incisal plane and parallel to the occlusal plane the maxillary rim with the attached bite fork is inserted into the patient's mouth The parallelism and centering of the attached bite fork are verified. The U-shaped frame is supported by two fingers and gently rotated and inserted into the stem of the bite fork in the patient's mouth. Then the condylar rods are unlocked and the condylar heads are then placed in the patient's right and left condylar centers on the previously marked points. Now the third point of reference that is infra orbital notch is palpated and the orbital pointer is set to the third point of reference the condylar rod readings are equalized on both sides and the locking screws are tightened following this the orbital pointer is also tightened in position once the entire apparatus is in position the condylar rods orbital pin and the bite fork are verified for any movement alignment and parallelism The contoured mandibular occlusal rim may be used during the transfer to stabilize the maxillary rim. The face bow record is removed from the patient by loosening only the condylar screws. The record is now ready to be mounted on the articulator. Thank you for watching this video and for more such contents related to dentistry please like share and subscribe to simplified dentistry.